welcome back friends welcome to another video from Shomu's biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the 454 DNA sequencing we've been talking about DNA sequencing uh, for a long time and this is one of the uh, very new kind of DNA sequencing technologies belonging to the next generation DNA sequencing technology it's known as 454 DNA sequencing now uh, 454 DNA sequencing uh, is uh, fast and it's also reliable uh, and it depends on fluorescence data to sequence the DNA. Now what is this 454 DNA sequencing? In this DNA sequencing uh, it's mostly used for larger genomes for example human genome or any other organisms whole genome sequencing is very e effective. The idea is you have the whole genome which is much more complex bigger. And the first stage of this sequencing is the fragmentation of the genome. So you fragment the genome using physical sharing most of the time because you don't use any chemical process there. Physical sharing will give us the breakdown product of that genome. So once we have the breakdown product of the genome, then the second stage is the ligation of adapters. Because in this 454 DNA sequencing, we have two different adapters to be ligated uh, to the uh, fragments of the genome and this is called the li this is known as the adapter ligation and this is required so two different adapters say adapter 1 adapter a and let's say this one adapter b two different adapters are ligated in two opposite terminal of the dna so let's say here this is the adapter b this up and adapter A also now this adapter ligation is very important because this adapter will help us to drive the whole process of DNA sequencing because you know the adapters that we add they are nothing but DNA sequence single stranded DNA sequence now we begin with the genome fragmentation once we fragment the genome the DNA sequence that we get is also double stranded so after that we need to separate the strands of the DNA to make it single stranded that is very very important to make it as a single stranded DNA okay so we have the single stranded DNA once we have the single stranded DNA we add the adapter or sometimes we can also add the double stranded adapter at the very beginning where the DNA is also double stranded in that case let's say after the fragmentation of the DNA we get this let's say this is the DNA and after that we add the adapter as double stranded in both the ends let's say this is the adapter A and this is the adapter B neither the way we can do that okay we can add it as a double stranded or we can uh, take the double stranded DNA make it uh, single stranded we separate the strands then we can also add the adapters so if, if we go like this say the double stranded fragment DNA and we add the adapter after the ligation of the adapter we will separate the DNA strands so ultimately we will need the separated DNA strands for the whole process so now we have the single stranded DNA here where we have two adapters ligated at the terminal here and here okay so this is the preparation that we require at the end so this single stranded DNA with two adapters ligated at both the ends now it's taken and we use this to be attached to the beads okay because we have beads that are present now what are these beads these beads are insoluble molecules these are large particles okay uh, made up with some molecules which are not interacting with any other chemicals and enzymes that we use here so we have these beads small uh, particle like beads now the beads are constructed in such a way so that we can attach small section of nucleotide sequence single stranded nucleotide sequence at the at surrounding the beads okay we input all those single stranded sequence at the bead so let me draw the exact structure of the bead say here So bead will look something like this, okay? Uh, the particle and single stranded nucleotide sequences are added, covered, covering the beads. So we have this. Now the role of adapter A, remember, 
this role of adapter A, this one, red one, is to attach with the sequence that is present in the bead. That's why we add this adapter because we want this DNA sequence to be fixed properly to a solid surface. Now, bead is a solid surface, right? And bead also carry this single stranded DNA sequence, which is complementary to the adapter A sequence. So now, adapter A sequence can easily bind, okay, with this bead and then rest of the DNA is placed, okay. For example, we only draw one. This is the condition and obviously, adapter B is present here. This is the scenario. So once the bead is attached with the DNA sequence, DNA fragment, then the, this is probably the fourth process. The fourth step is to amplify this DNA because you know we want to run as many times as we can for the gene sequencing because if you run more times, the gene sequencing results will be more accurate, right? So we want every single fraction of this fragmented DNA uh, to be multiplied, to be amplified and to be run multiple times to get better sequencing result, more accurate sequencing results. So we, once we attach that, after that, we start adding nucleotide sequences. Start adding the nucleotide sequences and the nucleotide sequence will produce the complementary structure for this DNA, okay? So every time it will produce a complementary structure. Once it produces the complementary structure, then again it will go and bind to some place else next and then again that their complementary structure will go. So the idea is always this, this same way. So it will produce a complementary structure of it. Then we take this DNA complementary, let's say this whole DNA and it will go and bind to some other beads with the complementary nature and then again it will produce this complementary DNA. So it will go on and on and on to produce the multiple copies of this DNA to be amplified. So here actually we don't require PCR process for the amplification of the target DNA, okay? Because you know after it replicates, it will produce a complementary strand. Now if you use this complementary strand, it can produce our target DNA again. So use this complementary strand to produce more and more target DNAs in the whales, okay? Because once we produce these beads, this whole thing is going on in a, in a tube, okay? In a tube or a big well, big giant well. So once we produce this complementary DNA, we run that amplification process. We just add all the nucleotide sequences time to time and also the DNA polymerase, which will easily produce the complementary DNA strand. The idea here is to produce more complementary DNA strand, more strand of our interest because we want to run those strand in the sequencer more often, okay? So by this way, we produce multiple numbers of our target DNA strands. So once all those strands are produced, remember, once all those strands are produced, then it's time to attach those strands to the beads because, you know, all of them contains this, this ultimate this part of the A, adapter A. So with the help of adapter A, all those uh, structures, all those structures will start added, all those DNA will start adding. So ultimately what will happen? We have the DNA attached, the target DNA, which is to be sequenced attached, okay? And at the end we have that adapter B, this is adapter A, this is how the whole beads are filled. Now, this is the time where we add, so this thing is going on for not only one fragment, but for each of the fragments that are present, okay? Because the D there will be multiple DNA fragments. So for each of the fragments, we do the same thing, okay? And once they produce this single-stranded DNA fragments, and they are attached to the beads, now the beads are filled with such DNA fragments together. Then what we do, we take the beads and we load them into wells, okay? There are small plates. It's, they're not that big, very smaller, tiny plates, tiny wells. Wells means small uh, volumetric area where we put all the beads covering the target DNA there. Because once we put into the wells, the well is inserted into the actual sequencing machine. Till now, whatever thing is going on is a pre-sequencing process. Once everything is ready, then we load them into the gel, uh, not gel, wells. W upon loading into the wells, 
when we put the wells into the sequencer then the actual sequencing will begin now in every sequencing technology you know every next generation sequencing technology this is very common step the first step is the fragmentation of the genome second stage is the adapter ligation and the third stage is the attachment of the target DNA to the beads and fourth stage is loading the beads into the well and the fifth and final stage is the running of the sequence and the sixth stage uh, which you can final not the fifth the fifth stage is the interpretation of the data to get the sequence so these are the major six different phases of uh, this whole sequencing process most of the new next generation sequencing process 454 is one of them so once you load them into the gel so this is the condition now we want to check the actual sequence the sequence of this black fragment this is the target fragment remember so for that what we do we add primers we add primers the primers will bind with this adapter b region okay that is why the adapter b is required so the primer is attached to the adapter b and then what we do we extrapolate this primer okay because you know upon adding the primer we have a 3 3 prime hydroxyl group at the end where the new nucleotide sequences if added one after another each time a nucleotide sequence is added a specific fluorescence is generated okay so we can tag each of those nucleotide sequences with different fluorescence color green blue red yellow different colors so each time a each time a uh, nucleotide sequence is added it will generate a fluorescence or we can allow one fluorescence color and what we can do we can run the whole process for each nucleotide sequences at a time let's say we add the we first try it for a nucleotide sequence thymine so what we know thymine is tagged with the fluorescence so whenever thymine is present in the complementary uh, strand wherever the adenine is present in the complementary strand thymine will pair with it and upon addition of the thymine with adenine it will generate the fluorescence okay or something okay because after each time let's say we add the thymine and let's say here consecutive three adenines are present and let's say here no adenines are present so what will happen priming is also here so what will happen thymine will not bind with guanine here so no uh, attachment but here three thymines will pair so there will be three different attachments now after this whole binding step we wash it completely after the wash what we get we get only the data from the bound thymine as a fluorescence measurement okay so we can get the fluorescence as three thymines are present the degree of fluorescence will be 3x three times more if one thymine is present it will be only of one type if there is no thymine there won't be any fluorescence measured from that point so by this way we can check wherever uh, there is a specific nucleotide sequence is present or not in the target DNA okay and if we know the complementary sequence we all obviously know the actual sequence that that is the complementary of it so this is the idea of sequencing now after the time let's say we go for a guanine sequence so wherever if there is a C guanine will attach we get a fluorescence if there is no C guanine will not attach no fluorescence more than one guanine uh, cytosine two guanines will consecutively added let's say in two cytosine is present two guanines will added so the data the degree of fluorescence that we get will be twice 2x two times more so by this way we can get a graph what kind of graph we expecting here we expect the graph from the beginning a, a balance a basic level of uh, fluorescence is always there but now after that let's say this is for the guanine okay and this is let's say for two it's for one like this okay so this is for three let's say this is the base level for example say this is cytosine adenine that means guanine is one so the intensity of the fluorescence is once so one guanine is present at the point after that we have a three C so three cytosine residues uh, because 3 means the intensity is three, 3 times more so obviously 3 is present in this case it's only 2 so by this way we can understand the complementary sequence now if you know the complementary is guanine obviously the actual target sequence will be C cytosine if this is the complementary is cytosine the actual target sequence will be guanine if the complementary is adenine the actual sequence will be thymine so now this is the sequence 
that we want to find out. By this way, we can find out the sequence of the complete fragmentized DNA at a time from different wells. So once we get the idea of the fragmentized DNA sequence for different wells, then it, the data will be fed to a monitor a CPU through which uh, the CPU will process. There are software programs designed for this. We will process the data for each of the fragments and they will try to overlap those fragments to get the actual uh, complete sequence of the whole genome. And this is how the whole process works for a 454 sequencing. I hope this video helps you to understand the next generation sequencing like 454 sequencing. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely, definitely subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Links are provided here. Thank you.